Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Palos Heights Public Library virtual program. My name is Christina Vincent. I'm so glad you can join us. Uh, and I'm here to talk about Microsoft Word Intermediate. Um, before we get started, and while we're waiting for a few more people to show up, I will let you know about some more of our upcoming programs. Give me one moment to pull it up. Here we go. Okay, as you can see, um, uh, concluding today, we had the Friends of the Library book sale. Uh, and then here we also have uh, today's program, Microsoft Word Intermediate. But coming up on this Thursday, February 10th at 6.30 p.m., we have the Chocolate Dessert and Pastries with Chef Susan Maddox. Uh, we will let you know this Friday, the library will be closed for our staff in service day all day, but then we'll be open again uh, that Saturday, February 12th. On next upcoming Tuesday, February 15th, we have Lincoln on slavery, emancipation and equality. And then uh, Monday, February 21st, we have trivia night at home. So be sure to sign up for all of these programs on our website, phlibrary.org. And then uh, going back to my program here, I will let you know um, we are having uh, your audio and your video uh, is paused and muted, but you, if you have any questions throughout the class, feel free to put them in uh, the chat function. Oh, I see, yes, uh, yeah, your, uh, your mute button is uh, gone right now because we have you muted. But if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat box at the bottom of your screen, or there's also a Q&A section. So feel free throughout the program to put your uh, questions or comments in those areas. Also, uh, we'll be having a Q&A also at the end of the program. So if you have any questions, I'll be going through. Okay, yes, I, I do not hear you. So don't worry about background noise. I cannot hear it. Um, and then uh, let's uh, get started on Microsoft Word Intermediate. Give me one moment. There we are. Okay, going through first uh, is, uh, here is the agenda, but I'm gonna try to get through today. Uh, first, we'll go over formatting documents, such as fonts, uh, paragraphs, and spacing. Then we'll go through layout, uh, the margins and how to make columns, uh, tables, how to insert tables, how to insert images, shapes, and other media into your documents, how to create headers and footers. And then if I get time, we'll also get into uh, text, creating word art, creating page borders, and then going over the review section, the spelling and the source. So the first part is um, formatting documents. Uh, and I'm gonna show you the font tab, which is uh, where you can um, design um, the fonts and size. So I'm gonna switch over to an example here that I have opened up. This is a Word document. And at the top, is what is called uh, the ribbon. And the ribbon has um, uh, tabs. Each section of the ribbon is called a tab. So let's see here. 
is the font tab under the home option. And up here is where you would select uh, different types of fonts. So you can see here, mine is on Times New Roman. So you can select different fonts by selecting the arrow here. And it will tell you your most recently used fonts. And then underneath that has all fonts and they're listed alphabetically. And you can see it gives you an example of what the font would look like. If you wanted to change the font of something that's already been typed, you would have to left click and highlight the area. And you can see there is like a small pop-up menu that comes up with um, the fonts, or you can also go up to the top here, click on the arrow, and you could select the font you want it changed to, and you can see the font is immediately changed. Right next to the fonts, uh, you see a number. This is the font size. Typically, the font is usually at 12 point, but you can make it smaller, which would be quite small on the screen, or you can make it quite large. Uh, usually, this uh, size of font is used for like a poster. But you can uh, select the font size you want to change it to. Or you can also even uh, click your cursor into the font size here. Hit backspace and you could type in uh, the font size that you want. And then just hit enter and it will change it to that font size. You can also change the font uh, with these two A's right next to it. This A increases the font size by just a little bit. And this one decreases the font size uh, by a point each. Right next to it are these two A's. This is to change the case. Um, so you can see standard that you type something in sentence case, which with the first character, um, uh, uppercase and then the rest lowercase. You can select uh, lowercase to create everything lowercase. You can select uppercase to make everything uppercase like that. You can capitalize each word just like that. Or you could toggle case, so it would create, uh, make everything the opposite of the case that it is. Select, uh, let's just change that back to sentence case. Like that. This option here uh, clears all formatting, so it will clear the formatting that you have done, and it will change it back to uh, standard, which is Calibri and 11 point. This option here is bold, so that would bold everything that's highlighted, italicize to italicize everything that is highlighted, and then underline to underline everything that is highlighted. This next option here is called strike through, that strikes a line through what's highlighted. That's usually for uh, editing purposes. So if you want something deleted later on, but you're not deleting it right now, you can select strike through. These next two options, subscript and superscript, are usually for uh, formulas, if you're writing formulas in your document. Next to that is text effects and typography. That adds effects to your um, highlighted text, such as like a reflection uh, to give it a 3D effect. This is standardly used for like if you're making a poster or something like that. Uh, these are some text effects you can have. Right after that is uh, to highlight. So if you wanted to uh, highlight 
some text. Uh, so for example, yellow. We can also have other colors such as red or dark blue or even black, but be careful which colors you select because you want to be able to read the text that you're highlighting. Or you can select no color to get rid of the highlight. And this last little option here is uh, font color. So that will change the uh, color of the font that you have highlighted. Usually um, it is on automatic, which is black. You can have uh, red or purple, lots of different color options. Again, make sure you're selecting a color that is easy to read. If it's too light like this, it's gonna be hard to read. You can also select uh, more colors here. So you can have lots of variety of options. You would click OK once you find a color you would like. OK, and it's going to change to that color there. Go. Again, uh, if you have any questions throughout the class, you can always put your questions in the chat or Q&A, and I will uh, see them pop up. Okay, going on uh, to the paragraph tab, which is right next to the font tab. Going back to my example, it's right here. So this will um, affect some of the spacing in your uh, document. So again, let's uh, highlight here what I have. Uh, you will first see here uh, some dots. These are the bullet points. This is where you could create bullet points. And they have a little arrow next to them to give you um, some options. Right now, it's listed on none because I have uh, the numbering system. But you could create um, the standard black bullet points, clear bullet points, square, and then you can even have some images, an arrow, check. And if I click on here, define new bullet, this will pull up a pop-up menu where it gives a little preview of what the bullet points will look like. But you can also uh, select a symbol or a picture if you wanted to, and it will take you to insert pictures, which I'll go to into in just a moment. But you can also have symbol, and then you could select a symbol here to be your bullet point if you would like. So say I like one little hearts, click on that and press OK. It gives me a little preview of what it would look like. And I can also select the alignment of the bullets. Standardly, they're on the left side. But I could have them centered or on the right. And if I clicked OK, you can see how they would look here. Next to that is numbers. So if I wanted um, my points to be numbered instead of having bullet points, I could click on this and I can select uh, how I want the numbers to look. I could have numbers with a period, numbers with a parenthesis, Roman numerals, uh, capitalize um, letters instead. I can also uh, click on define new number format. And again, just like the bullet points, I can select the number style, what font they're in, how they're aligned. And it gives me a little preview of what it will look like. If I press OK, we'll change to that. Now you can see here, that these are more indented than my other numbers. And you'll see here what looks like the bottom half of an hourglass and the top half of the hourglass. So I can left click on these and I can just scooch it over to where the other numbers are so they line up again. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so uh, question about bullets and how to like create the the lines. So like there, each one is indented in a different way. That would be here since next one, the third one. I can click on that, and that will um, let me create kind of like an outline for it. So you can see here, I can have uh, different ones like that. The multi-level list, so you can select one of those and I can click on it. I can modify them here. You can select the number style for them here, lots of options, or again, different bullets for different levels. And I can uh, change how much it indents. So usually standardly is by half an inch, but I can have it smaller indents or larger indents here. So I can uh, select the multi-level, it's a multi-level list for creating outlines and stuff like that. Okay, and I would press okay once I'm ready or I can cancel. Next to it here is also where I can increase or decrease, decrease indents. This is where I can also sort uh, the list. So if I want to have an alphabetical list. Right next to that, what looks like the backwards P, this is uh, for showing the formatting. Right now, uh, I do not have it selected, but if I were to select it, I can see where my returns are, uh, how big are the indents here, and here I can see uh, the spacing. Uh, these do not print out if you have it selected, so you won't see the backward P's and, and the spaces printed out when you print out your document. This is just for the formatting, so you can see the spacing in your document. If that's too distracting, or you can always turn it off and then it will show you what it will look like when it's print out. Underneath that here is uh, the alignments of my document. So standardly, um, documents are aligned to the left right here. And as you can see, when I put a cursor, it's uh, on the left side of the document. And if I started typing, you can see uh, the cursor moves from left to right. If I were to have it centered, you can see the cursor starts in the center of the page and then the text becomes centered. So for example, if I were to highlight this, make it centered. You can see it centers it on the page. Uh, aligned right, we'll align everything to the right of the page, like that. And then justify uh, is not very commonly used, but it's used sometimes. Standardly, usually like in newsletters or newspapers, they use justify. What it does is make sure each line uh, is the exact uh, size, distributes uh, the text evenly between the margins. So uh, each line would start over here, and each line would precisely end here so that um, all the words are spaced evenly. So sometimes you'll see in uh, newspapers or newsletters, they're using justify. Um, some lines, uh, if they have smaller amount of words, um, there may be more space in between each word. So it fills out all the way here. Or if a word uh, is getting cut off at the end, it'll put a hyphen. So the word continues onto the next line. If you see uh, anything like that, it's using uh, the justify. This last thing here, um, this is uh, for shading, so we'll shade um, 
the space around the text. So you can see you'll have color around the text here. Like that, that is shading. And right next to it is uh, borders um, just for around the text. So as you can see here, I put a line underneath what I had uh, highlighted. So it'll put borders around the text you have highlighted. So if I do all borders, you can see it does a line around each um, question here. That's how you can do borders around text. Uh, if you do not want any borders, there's no border right here. You click on that, it will get rid of all the borders. This is also, there's a few spots where you can find page borders. This is one option down here, borders and shading. And you can either have borders for around the text, or you can see here, page border. Then it will do borders around the page. And you can see it gives you quite a few options. You can have uh, just the box, or you can have a shadow effect or a 3D effect. Here, under style, you can select the style of the border, what the border will look like. You can have a thicker border. You can have a zigzag border. Uh, more of a simple line. You can choose the color here. Uh, the width, how, how thick the border is. And then here is also where you can select art. So if you wanted like an image border, uh, you can select here. So for example, here is hearts. And you can see in the little preview here, there's hearts now all around the border. You can select uh, how big the image is. So if you wanted like bigger hearts, you can see here. Is bigger hearts, or you can make it smaller. So it'd be lots of small little hearts. And here's where you can select uh, whether you want it to apply to the whole document. So if your document is multiple pages, each page will have the heart border. Or you can select uh, just the first page, everything except the first page, just the page you have selected. So you have quite a few options. So if I press OK, you can see now a bunch of little hearts around my document. Okay, give me one moment. I see there's another question. Oh, no, that's the same question. I apologize. OK. On to the next section here. Give me one moment. Uh, now I will go in uh, into spacing for the document. Uh, and spacing, you can find actually in this little drop down menu right here, you can see there's a little arrow in the corner of the paragraph section. If I click on it, it'll bring up this pop up menu here. And this is where I can uh, select the spacing of my document. At the top, again, this is where we can do the alignment, the left, uh, right, center, or justify. Uh, this is also where we can uh, do some indentation for the document. Um, you can see here, there's no indentation right now for it, but if I were to make it uh, some indentation, it's going to show up in the preview here. What I have selected will be indented. I can press OK. You can see this has moved in by half an inch now. You can also select it back to zero. But uh, this is the spacing of the document. So how much space is in between each line? Standardly uh, is single spacing. So the next line will appear um, right after the previous. So 
or how it is. But if I were to say, make it double, there is now going to be a space in between each line. Let's see here, you can see. Let's push it down the page a little bit because so there's a space in between each line. That is standard really used for um, if someone is going to be like making notes on your document and you want them to be able to have space to write in their notes, you can do double. Underneath that, where it says don't add space between paragraphs of the same style, you can see that's checked. If I uncheck it, you will now see there's more space after each return. So that's if uh, you need more space in between each paragraph. You can have that selected. And now if I select it, now there's not going to be space in between each paragraph. So now you can see there's less space again. All right, uh, give me one moment. I'm going to take a sip. Hold on. Sorry about that. Okay, going on. Now I'm gonna go into the layout section. This is where you can, um, again, change more of how your document looks. Back here, so now, as you can see, I'm gonna jump ahead to this layout section here. You click on that. Now a new menu comes up. This is where you can change the margins and orientation of your document. So the margins, you can see uh, where this gray area is right here. There's about an inch of gray here and here, and then here, and at the bottom of the page here. This is the margin. This is where it's kind of like the dead space of your document where you're not able to type anything up uh, in this gray area. Usually, so um, uh, the printer has some space so the text doesn't go all the way to the edge of the page just in case there's any printer error or like your printer is not aligned completely correctly. So there's space here so the text doesn't come off the page when it prints out. But you can change the size of the margin. Usually they recommend to have at least uh, half an inch of space. So if I were to click on this, you can see uh, text is moved up on the page and it's a little closer to this part of the page because now there's only a uh, half an inch of space. So that does give you more room for text. But then you can also have uh, inch, you can have moderate, you can have wide. So there's two inches now on the left and right side. That can look kind of squished though. So a lot of people usually don't do two inches, but you can have it. can have inch on the top and bottom and inch and a quarter on the left and right. You can also select uh, custom margins here. And this is where you can uh, change each margin if you wanted to. Do whatever you wanted. Here is also where you can choose the orientation if you want. Uh, standardly, you're in portrait, but you can also have landscape. You can see the preview here. This is go usually for like uh, posters or uh, if you're having a little trifold newsletter, you can do it in landscape or you can do it in portrait. And then you can select whether to apply to the whole document or just a selected page. And then to save, just press OK. And then it changed back. Up here is also where you can choose the orientation 
portrait or landscape. Next to it is size. That's going to be the size of the page you're printing out. Standardly, you're on eight and a half by 11, or what's known as letter size. But you can also have eight and a half by 14, which is um, legal size, or 11 by 17, which is ledger. These three are usually the most standard sizes for printers. But if you maybe are having, if you have a poster printer at your work or something like that, they may have A3, A4, or A5. And it has all the sizes here uh, in inches. So you can look through, there's quite a few. There's even postcard size or envelope sizes. Again, in uh, inches, so you can see the exact size here. So quite a few options you can choose from. But usually when you're first starting a new document, it's going to be an eight and a half by 11. Uh, right next to it is columns. So if you're again, you're creating a newsletter, uh, a trifold pamphlet, uh, something like that. This is where you can select columns. So standardly, you're on just one column because this is all considered one column. But uh, you can select uh, the text. Uh, click here. You could create two columns. And it's going to uh, put everything you selected into two columns. You can have three columns, very small. Uh, you can have a smaller column on the left and a larger column on the right, like that. Or a larger column on the left and a smaller column on the right, like that. Or you can even go into more columns here and I'll bring up a little pop-up menu. And you can either select from the presets they have, or you can even create how many columns you want. Uh, the more columns you have, the, the smaller, the thinner the columns are going to be. Um, you can also select uh, to have a line in between each column, so it breaks it up a little bit easier to read if you want. Uh, in here, Uh, this is where you can select uh, the width of the column and how much spacing is going to be between each column. Um, so if I have selected the three column here, each column is going to be the same width. But if I had selected either the left or right column, it's going to say that uh, one of the columns is going to be smaller than the others. So it's going to have the break um, sizing for you. Or if I wanted to say equal column width, it's going to automatically um, make it so all the columns are the same size. So if I show you here, if I add another column, each column is going to get smaller the more columns I add. Or if I unselect equal column width, I can then make one of the columns bigger than the others, but it's going to make one of the other columns smaller. And then again, I can uh, select either to have it just the selected text, or I can have the whole document be columns. And then if I wanted to save it, I would press OK. Or if I don't want to save it, I can press Cancel. Go back here to make it all one column again. Here we are. Uh, here is where I can uh, create breaks in my document. So if I wanted to create uh, a page break, page break is going to um, create a new page from wherever I have my cursor. So you can see here, I have my cursor right here. So if I Put in a page break. 
is going to move the rest of the document to a new page with uh, the first part of the document here. This is good for um, if I want to create a new page without having to hit return a bunch of times. So I can just create a break. If you find that you do something uh, you didn't want to do, if something seems to mess up the document or you realize uh, maybe I didn't want to do what I just did, there's an option up near the top here called undo. Right now it says undo insertion because I just inserted a page break. If I were to click on that, it's going to undo the last thing I just did. If I were to hit on it again, it's going to do the um, thing I did before that. So you can see I was doing columns. But if I hit undo columns, it's now going to bring back the columns. And you can just keep hitting undo because uh, it keeps going back, uh, um, doing the thing, undoing the things you've been doing since you opened the document. If I find that uh, actually wanted to redo something. So if I hit undo and I realize uh, I've gone back too far, I can hit redo and we'll redo what I did. So you can keep going back and forth through what you've done, the edits you've done uh, since you've had the document open. Going back to the PowerPoint. Here we are. Did uh, lay out the margins sizing. There is the columns there. Going on now uh, to tables. So you can see I'm going to go into a different tab. Tables is under insert here. So next to home, click on insert in here is where you can find uh, tables. This is good for um, kind of similar to spreadsheets. But you can click on this and you can see there's a um, large diagram here. This is where you can select the size of the table that you want. Let's say I want four columns and three rows. I can just hover over this till I get to four columns and then down three. And then I just left click here and it will create a table for me with four columns and three rows. Uh, if you find you uh, need to insert either more columns or rows, you can see if you hover in between the rows, there's a little plus option that comes up here. I just click on that and it's going to insert another row for me. Same for columns, if I hover in between, in between the columns, there we are, in between the columns here. I can just click on it and it'll add another column for me. That's a quick way to just create a table that I can type into. You can see uh, when I'm clicked inside the table, it's going to be a little menu that opens up at the top called Table Tools. If I'm clicked outside of it, that menu disappears. So I have to be clicked inside the table. And you can see here, I have some design options for my table. So right now I have the first one highlighted here, just a standard white table. But if I wanted to, I can click on either one of these. So you can see the table, the lines in between each cell are a little bit lighter in color. I can have this one which adds a little gray bar in between each alternating row. This one uh, kind of looks more like lines on a page here. 
but there is a cell in between each one of these. You can have um, kind of what I call like the, the header table. So it has a spot for you to write the titles at the top and the titles on the side. This one has no lines except for the few gray bars here. This one is a little bit harder to see. Or I can have this one again, another header kind of table, but has an italicized headers. But the standard one is usually this one. And then if I wanted to, I could create uh, colors for the table on my own. To say I wanted this row to be red, I would go to the shading portion here, click on it, and I can just click on the red, and then I could have a red row here. So I can create colors for my table myself if I wanted to. Again, red. But there we are. Here, I also can create a bigger border for it. So I can paint a border on my table if I wanted to. Create lines on it if I wanted to. Or I can also go to here for the borders and the cell I'm clicked into. I have a thicker border here. But also highlight the table and then do the borders that way. There we go. So there's the table and also here is layout. This is another way it can also insert uh, rows and columns or even delete rows and columns if you find you have too many rows or columns. This is also where, if I wanted to, I could, what's called merge cells. So I would take, uh, highlight the cells I want to merge, click on this, and you can see it, it just created the whole top line into one cell here. This is also where I could split cells. I could tell it how many columns and how many rows. Here we are. There we go. And here's also where I could split tables. So if I wanted to create two tables from the table I've created, I could split the table here. Uh, auto fit in the height and the width is how big and small each cell is. So the height, the height of each cell, row, and here the, the width of each cell in the columns. So that is tables. Going back to, click right here, uh, insert. Uh, this is where you would also insert pictures either from your computer, from here, pictures or online pictures is from the internet. Also shapes. So for example, if I wanted to insert an online picture, this is the image search that comes up. You would uh, click here. Unless you have a OneDrive account, you can also go uh, insert pictures from the OneDrive account. But if I go here, this is going to search the internet. So let's say I wanted to find a book, a picture of a book. I just type that in and either hit the magnifying glass or click on enter. And it's going to show you um, images that you can use for free. Um, if you have Creative 
comments clicked. So that means you don't have to worry about any copyright or anything uh, for these images. They are free to use. If you unclick that, that may find images that are uh, restricted by licensing. So you don't want to use anything um, that might be copyrighted, so be careful. But if I have this clicked, I do not have to worry about uh, copyright. So I can just uh, select one. Let's try this one. You can see a little check mark has now come in. That means that it's a selective. And I can select multiples if I want. But if I just want one at a time, select one and then hit insert. And there we are. It is now inserted into my document. Uh, and again, you can see when I have the picture highlighted, it has a new menu that comes up to format the pictures. This is where I can add picture borders. This is where I can crop the image. There's also where I can position or wrap text around the image. I can do colors or color corrections on it, artist effects. But most importantly is um, resizing and wrapping text around the picture. So you can see here, it's quite a big picture right now. And I may think this is, might be too big for my uh, document. Um, you can see here when I'm in the corners or when I'm near the top, these two arrows pop up here. This is for resizing the picture. Usually the best way to resize the picture is from the corners. So I left click and then just drag. You can see it's resizing the picture for me a little bit. Also try from the bottom here, there we go. So maybe I can see it, make it as big and small as I want to, as long as it fits on the page. If I tried doing it from the sides, it will resize it, but it will kind of stretch and squash the picture a little bit. So if I do that too much, the image might start looking a little wonky, especially if I do it like top down like this. You can see it kind of stretches and squashes the image too much. So it won't look like its usual self. So it's best to resize from the corners so the image stays the same, doesn't squish and squash too much. So I can have it here like this. But you can kind of see it interrupts the flow now of my document. It won't, if I try to put it in line maybe with the other questions, it won't align correctly. It kind of interrupts the flow of my document. So say I want it to be more in line. I want the, the text to wrap around the picture, but I won't do it like when it's like that. So if I go to either wrap text or if I right click on it, you can see this pop up menu comes up. And I go to wrap text. Uh, it gives me some options for wrapping the text around the image. You can see there's, you can do it behind text, then the text is going to be over the picture. Or I can do it in front of text, but you can see now. The picture is in front of the text, so I can't see the text. Usually the best uh, one is either uh, tight or square. And so let's uh, select tight. And you see now the text kind of wraps around the picture. Maybe not quite in the right way. So now I can switch the picture over. 
And you can see now, now the text properly wraps around the picture. So now I can put the picture more in line with the text without there being a huge gap in between the questions. It kind of wraps now around the picture. So again, that is either wrap text selected here, or if you right click, you see this little pop-up and you come up and you go to wrap text. And usually the best is either tight or square is the best for going in line with the text. You can see this is also where I can cut the picture. If I don't like the picture, I don't like it, I can press cut and that will just delete the picture from my document or I can copy the picture so I can have two of the same picture in the, in the document. Up here is also crop. This is where I can crop some of the image. You can see these black bars have now shown up. So say, I feel like there's too much uh, open space at the top of the picture here, too much open space at the bottom of the picture here. I can select it like that. And now there's these grayed out portions. These are the portions of the picture that will now not show up. If I right click outside, you can see now the picture has been cropped a little bit. The extra space is gone. But then again, if I feel like I want the extra space back, I can go to crop again. You can see the grayed out spaces are still there. They're still saved. So I can always give back a little bit of the picture, put a little bit more of the picture back in if I decide I've cropped too much of it right there. And again, left or right click outside and then there it's recropped again. Sorry. Uh, we are approaching the end of the class. We got about 10 more minutes. Um, if there's something I haven't touched on yet uh, that you wanted uh, touched on or if you need um, some re-clarification on some stuff, uh, feel free to put it in the chat or the Q&A uh, and I'll try to get to it uh, real quick now before the end of the class. Give me one moment. Okay, going back to the slide here. Let's see, touched on inserting images. Uh, next would be inserting shapes. Again, pretty similar to the inserting pictures. Right next to the inserting pictures is inserting shapes. This is, again, more um, design options. This is for inserting like um, square circles, but then a lot of times what I use it for is inserting arrows. If you want to point to something in your document or your publication, you can have arrows, basic shapes. This is also where you can insert a text box. So if you have a little quote or something you want to highlight, you, highlight, you can put in the text box. Um, Let's just try, for example, an arrow. You would click on what you would want. And you can see this little uh, crosshair or plus sign that has shown up. This lets you uh, design how big you want the uh, shape you're inserting. So you would left click and hold and kind of pull down, go to the side if you want to make it bigger. Uh, Go in if you want to make it thinner, and then you can pull on it or shorten it however much you want. And then just let go when you like the size that you have. And here it is here. Again, you can always adjust the size later using the corners or the top or bottom like that. 
this little icon right here, again, is the layout options. So you can have it in text, square or tight, or in line with the text, or in behind the text, or in front of text, like that. You can also change the color uh, up here in the shape. Again, when you have it uh, selected, you have this uh, optional menu that comes up. So I can change the color that is inside it. So say I want it red. You can also change the color of the outline of it. Right now, you can kind of tell it's a blue. I can make it uh, black like that. So now there's a black outline on it. You can also have, again, some effects. So you can have some uh, 3D effects on it or a glow effect on it. And here also, you can change uh, the size of it uh, manually here, if you don't want to use this option here. Here we are. In uh, last section, I'm going to touch on real fast is the review right here. This is where you will find a spell check in your the source. So uh, once you're done with your document and you wanted to make sure you have all your spelling and grammar correctly. Do I click on that? You can see on a few of my words in my document here, there's a red squiggly line underneath it. It thinks that this is misspelled, though this is just uh, a name, so it doesn't recognize that it's a name. Sometimes you might have something like that happening in your document, um, but you can Click on the spelling and grammar. And you can see now a new menu has popped up on the right side of my document. This is uh, going through spelling. So first it thinks this is misspelled, but it's just a name. You can either hit ignore or ignore all. And it's going to ignore all the instances uh, this word comes up. So it realizes not to um, ask every time whether this is misspelled or not. If something is misspelled, it will give you some options here. You can click on it and you can say change or change all. Change is going to change the one instance. If you select change all, it's going to change all the instances this word comes up. I'm going to select ignore all, ignore all. Uh, I think Elvis is misspelled this time. It is correct because it's supposed to be capitalized. So I can select change. And now it let me know that the spelling and grammar check is complete. I just hit okay. Now, if I'm having trouble of thinking of a synonym for a word, I can use the the source. I can either uh, highlight the word that I want a new word for, click on the source, and you can see here it's saying I'm asking for a new word for transformed, and then it gives me some. I can either uh, select which word I want to use instead or I can just go in and type it in. Uh, otherwise, if I'm trying to think of a word and I don't have it typed into my document, but I want to find a synonym for it, I can just type it in. So if I want to find a synonym for like good, type it in, hit search, and it's going to find more synonyms for me. And all the different instances could can be used for.
Okay. That is um, Microsoft Word Intermediate. Again, I'm going to go through. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, and then I have uh, more of our upcoming tech classes. On Monday, February 21st at 2 p.m., we have how to get ebooks, e audiobooks, and e magazines. Monday, March 7th at 2 p.m., Facebook Basics. Monday, March 21st at 2 p.m., Android Basics. Monday, April 4th at 2 p.m., meet our online resources. And then Monday, April 25th at 2 p.m., Internet Basics. So if any of those classes look interesting to you, feel free to sign up for them uh, on our calendar at phlibrary.org. I do thank you for coming to our class. If you have any other additional questions or if you want a copy of the presentation, uh, you can email me there and I can send you a copy. This uh, class was recorded. So it will be put up on our YouTube channel uh, within the next couple of days. And so you can watch it again there. Uh, again, thank you all for coming. Um, and uh, don't forget about our other upcoming tech classes and our upcoming programs. Thank you much.